Welcome to Business Owners Radio. Business Owners Radio, where established business owners get the latest insights, strategies, and practices to grow a sustainably profitable business. And now, taking care of business, your hosts, Craig Moen and Shai Gilad. Welcome to Business Owners Radio, episode 32. In today's show, we'll be talking to author Mark Steeren about his new book, The Student's Guide to Entrepreneurship. Good morning, Craig. Good morning, Shy. Hey, Craig, I have a question for you. Have you ever tried a new idea or tried to launch a new product or service and just think it was the most brilliant thing in the world and then have it just completely go wrong? Oh, yeah. Actually, looking back, it's a riot because there's been a number of those occurrences and you'd think you'd learn from one. But I remember one very early on. Of course, as a kid, I had major inventions only to be found out later that they had been done decades before. So part of the history and learning process. But I remember one, I thought that I invented the first bicycle rack for a car. I thought that was really cool that I could take my bike and, you know, we're starting to drive and whatnot at very early ages with or without licenses in my age. But anyway, (laughs) um, so putting my bike on a car would be really cool. And and they had this new stuff out, you know, aluminum tubing and box tubing and all of this stuff and aluminum pop rivets, industrial pop rivets had just come out and that's all grabbing all of this stuff and making this great design and putting the bike on and it just fit the car. It was just looking good, nice and compact, easy to put on, take off. It was going to be great. Put the bike on and was going out the drive way you know the dip at the end of the drive of transition to the street right sure sheared the bike right off <laughs> oh man <laughs> <laughs> minor details in it's all in all in the testing right um things we don't like to do we want to make it and get it out there right away right yeah, so I guess that never really made it to commercial production, or were you able to iterate from there? No, it uh, was a one-off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, bringing new ideas to the marketplace is one of the most exciting part of business for most entrepreneurs. They love to create things, you know, and so the challenge can be, though, it's hard to tell what's actually going to happen and how the market's going to react without spending the money to really launch your idea. Yeah, and that focus on the design and the testing, you know, to really validate, is there a market? You know, our guest today spends a lot of time helping people test their ideas and validating them before they get to market. Our guest is business educator and author Mark Steeren, the founding director of entrepreneurship at the Bullis School and the co-director of Georgetown University's Summer Launch Program. Mark's new book is The Student's Guide to Entrepreneurship. Good morning, Mark. Welcome to Business Owners Radio. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Very excited to have you today and talk about your new book, The Student's Guide to Entrepreneurship. So tell us what inspired you to write the book and give us a little idea what it's about. Sure. You know, what really inspired me is looking at my past startups, seeing what worked and didn't work. I think the best example is we had a RFID mobile ticketing and loyalty systems company back in the late 90s, and we raised a million dollars, had an amazing software that with the API's directly into the stadiums. I mean, let me give you a sense how it worked. If you walked up to Giant Stadium with your phone, you flash your device over the turnstile, out would dispense your ticket, and you enter the stadium. The notion was is that advertisers would have very little return on investment. So if Burger King put a uh, sign in the stadium, what is their returns? It was too ephemeral. So after the game, you would take your device, flash your phone at our Z-Pads located at a Burger King, and that would dispense a coupon saying, hey, Shy, thanks for coming to the game. You get 10% off your Whopper. And the notion of joining and uniting the mobile ticket with your loyalty system was to make this an all-encompassing system. Our theory was that if we raise money, that was validation. So we raised a million dollars. Then we had venture capitalists. They invested another $5 million. And instead of coming up and testing this product from the very get-go, we just kept raising money. And what I've learned is that is not the best way to validate your assumptions. And what we (laughs) teach now is really to just build things inexpensively. Build, measure, learn. And we build a simple prototype get feedback from the consumer, and from there we learn what's the best solutions. And that's kind of how we teach it, and that's really the impetus of the book. 
Yeah, you know, I noticed in the book you talk a lot about this BACA methodology and just a completely different approach, just going out and trying to fundraise and convincing people how brilliant you are and what a great idea you have. <laughs> and so talk to us a little bit about the development of BACA and how that informs the book. Yeah, you know, I work a lot with students. And the first thing I notice is they didn't really have a belief in themselves. BACA stands for Belief, Association, Customer Development, Business Model Canvas, and then Analytics. One of the notions that we try to instill in the students is really strong belief in in who they are and what they do. But belief is also the ability to listen to your consumers. So we spend a portion of the session teaching techniques to feel confident, not just to present your solution, but more importantly, to listen to consumers and understand their problems. Um, That's the first part. We try to figure out pain points. The second is the A for association. This is both creative association, design thinking, coming up with unique ideas, and to position your product. How do I associate my product with great feelings? You'll see many car commercials where they have this happy family, things that are completely unrelated to the car or selling of the pants, but it's that great association. So we try to teach that to the kids. The second is customer development and the business model canvas. So I will have the kids and business owners guess what their main assumptions are, but then I make them go out and validate those assumptions. And then finally is analytics. Analytics is key now to any business owner, and I'll tell you why. There is so much information out there and so much data to collect. If you're not collecting data, you're way behind your competitors. But here's the secret. You have to stay focused on only one element at a time. So think of a traffic jam. There are data all up and down 270, what's free, where lanes are open, But if you're not focused in on where the actual traffic jam is located and how to alleviate the pressure, you'll never understand how to increase throughput. And that's what we want. We want customer throughput. So analytics is important, but you have to make sure the team is focused on one aspect of analytics. Yeah, it's funny. You know, we just had this great show on analytics talking with John Johnson and Mike Gluck, who just brought out a new book called Every Data. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the topics was understanding not just that analytics are important, but figuring out which ones are really the drivers of your conversions, what you're, you know, which ones mean a lot to your business. So that's a huge thing. And I imagine helping people learn that early on with respect to their model has got to have just incredible benefits. That's a great point. But it's really interesting. You have to test your riskiest assumption first. What really drives your business model and figuring that out. So uh, I work with a a team called Jobs by Students, and it's really kind of a neat website platform where the students post skills they can do around the house. They can mow the lawn. They can walk the dog. And meanwhile, the parents will put simple tasks. I need my dog walked. I need my driveway shoveled, whatever it may be. And the platform with their unique algorithm matches the two. And it's nice for students because it gives them employment, it gives them self-worth, and it's great for parents because they want to help out kids, and the price point is significantly less for hiring these students than it would be their typical maintenance guy off Angie's List or Craigslist, wherever it may be. And we did a back-of-the-envelope goal. So they want to hit $10,000 by the end of the month. And how do we hit that goal? So they just did a back-of-the-envelope analysis. They have five team members, how many sales they need to get every week, and then break that down to every day. If they stay focused on that, one key metric of getting that particular customer signed up per day, they're way ahead of the game. As opposed to focusing on the other aspects, get an LLC, you know, get an insurance, which are important elements, but it shouldn't be the main focus where everyone is united in the goal. Yeah, you know, the thing that's great about having a methodology like this and breaking it down into these digestible bites of here's an overall framework for how to approach your business as people, we just do the things we like to do. And there's some things that are a lot cognitively easier than going out and interviewing customers or, or testing analytical ideas. You know, as you said, the example of, you know, forming an LLC or developing a website, maybe that's your thing because you really like, you know, technology. Um, that can really be an Achilles heel because if you're not paying attention to the things that might be a little harder but things that can actually have an impact on driving your business forward, you can end up feeling like you're just wallowing in place and you end up treading water. That's a great point. 
every business needs structure and every business needs goals where everyone buys in. So if a CEO of a company lays out a new employee benefit program or if a CEO lays out a new sales pipeline and new incentives surrounding that pipeline, he has to get the mid-managers all the way down to the lowest employee in that company to understand why they're doing this and why they're following the structure. It's not enough to lead your company. It's to make sure that everyone is on the same page. So really great companies, the employee number 7,000 understands why they're doing one particular thing. It's not just, hey, this is what the boss wants me to do. It's why the boss wants me to do it. And this is how it benefits me as an employee and benefits us as a company. It's funny because I consult with the dean of Harvard. I consult with other parents. I consult with students. And they all crave this structure. And they all crave an ability where they can communicate to everyone. And businesses that flounder and just go day to day and don't look strategically at their model, those are the ones that fail. Even a, a great study at Facebook, which is just one of my ideal companies to study and really analyze, their strategy was brilliant, that they would just focus in on Harvard, understand the metrics that made it work, and then they went to the other Ivy Leagues, and then they went to other schools. There are many small companies will look to try to get as many customers as possible without understanding who their customers are from day one. And that is a serious mistake. Yeah, you know, it reminds me so much what you're talking about is like the Tim Galloway thing about the performance equation Uh and, you know, this idea of reducing interference and by focusing on certain things, you're eliminating other things that you don't have to worry about because they're just not as important. You know, call it 80-20 rule, whatever you want to say. I think the leader needs not just to set the successful outcome, but more importantly, tell everybody what not to worry about. We're only going to focus on these things. (laughs) No, that's so true. And again, going back to like the chain analogy, you're only as strong as your weakest chain. So everyone either focuses on that weakest link or you cut that link off, right? And focus on the good stuff where you can make a real effect, real positive. And the 80-20 rule, it's an old adage. I think long tails come along and, and kind of change some of that dynamic, but it's still applicable to most startups. Yeah, it's just a great way to sort of visualize how important it is to focus. And so methodologies like Baca really give people that framework to begin to figure out how to chunk this information and get your team focused on the right thing. You know, it's interesting because entrepreneurship to to us is love, right? We love what we do. We're passionate what we do. We're excited every day to come to work. And people want to be inspired, right? They want something to say, you know, I work for X, And this company gets me jazzed and I wake up every morning and I'm excited to be here. So what do you do? You know, how do you change this whole new hiring dynamic of millennials who come in, who are so mobile, who may be with your company for two years, take that skill set and go somewhere else. You provide them this framework, this ability to come into work and love it just as much as you do, man, you're onto something. Um, If you come and treat it like a typical old white shoe corporate days, those days are done. You really have to focus in providing that culture, that environment, that structure where everyone can not just survive but thrive, right? You give them this parameter. It's interesting. People think what's the greatest incentive and the initial discussion was, oh, it must be money, it must be bonus. It's actually not bonus. It's the ability to grow. Clearly, money's tied into that, but it's the ability to grow. If you give them parameters and have the opportunity for employee 2000 to become employee number 10, man, that's growth. And that's exciting. And they'll jump on there and they'll stay with you. And that's what we want to see in these startups. Fantastic. In the implementation of the model and working with your students and clients, what do you find their biggest challenge area to be? You know, that's a great question. The biggest challenge is is they want to jump into their solution. They are convinced that they have come up with the next big thing. And the reality is, is people don't really care about your solutions. They only care about your problem. So if, if I have a headache... Um, I don't care if it's aspirin, Advil, ibuprofen, Tylenol that solves my headache. I just want that headache gone, right? So if you can focus in and identify their problems and work with the consumer to iterate the ideal solution, that's where you win. 
right? Isn't it cool to figure out, okay, this is their problem. I will get feedback from the consumer. We'll work together to find a solution. Then when you're ready to launch, you already have this built-in customer segment that I've told you, Craig, this is a great product. We love it. This is my problem. You've come up with a solution. I will buy it today, right? That's, that's huge. Too many of us say, kind of like when we fall in love with the perfect piece of real estate, man, there's other real estate. Don't fall in love with your solution. Focus in on the problem. That is the biggest challenge I have with, with students and even adults. The second problem is, is they don't want to go out and do it and build that simple prototype. So let's assume they've identified the problem. They then build out a solution. They will try to include as many features as they can. It's not what we teach them. You should focus in on the one thing that the consumers are demanding. Make that awesome. Learn from them, keep building, and then you can add on features. Amazon, right? Amazon is such a great company. They can buy everything. Echo, all these amazing products. I use Audible all the time. Amazon, if you look back at their old website, was links to books. That's it. They figured out what the consumer wanted, but initially it was merely you could purchase a book on this website. Now they've added these a million features where they own so many different verticals. Who doesn't want to use Amazon? It's fun. It's amazing how they make it easy. They really focus on the convenience side. And it's just one click away to acquire anything you need. So a great business model. It'll be fun, that, fun to watch in the future. Yeah, that's a great point. If I could add to that, I was judging a pitch competition last night. And the UX experience on their mobile app was very complicated. So the first question I ask is, you know, what are the users telling you about this design? What's the UX experience? And their response was, is that I haven't spoken to customers yet. They haven't seen the prototype. You know, that's that's not the response you want. Um, I could immediately look at that and say that is way too complicated of an app to use. Amazon is simple. Right. The beauty of simplification is awesome. Right. But that's based on feedback that consumers want. Let's really listen to that. And I think you'll be a lot more successful if you go with that approach. It was interesting to me reading your student guidebook and focusing on many of the structures and model that you've created. And one of them that caught my eye was a focus on some work that was done way, way long time ago by Napoleon Hill. Now, that rang a bell because as a kid, I was listening to Napoleon Hill albums that my mother had playing on the stereo many <laughs> years ago. So, That's great. And some of his best work goes back to 1937. So there's so many profound things from the past that have relevance to today. Any comments on that? I, I totally agree. That is the first thing I introduce is elements of Napoleon Hill and that belief that if you believe in yourself and just the simple process of writing down your goals every morning, repeating them to yourself in the morning and repeating them to yourself at night, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, you can do this. Entrepreneurs are awesome, right? You make nothing into something. How amazing is that? You provide jobs. You help families. But you got to believe that you can do it. With the advent of technology, cost of production has never been cheaper. Cost of distribution, never cheaper. I mean, I can make something in my basement and sell it in Santiago, Chile tomorrow morning. How cool is that? I mean, but you got to believe you can do it. And Napoleon Hill is a great, great read, and I recommend that to everyone I come across. Mark, I'm so glad that you brought up that idea of belief. You know, we deal with so many business owners that started out because of opportunity, not because they planned on becoming an entrepreneur, but because something happened. They lost their job and they were really good at something or a division was being phased out and they had some internal knowledge and unique and specific knowledge about a deliverable. And they thought, you know what, I can do this. And they had the courage to jump in. And then what they find out after a few years is they start to get discouraged because running a business is a lot harder than they thought. Mm. And so it's kind of that idea of what got them there isn't able to carry them further forward. And they realize that they really have some gaps in their skills. And so this idea of belief and how even someone that's an established business owner or someone like yourself who's been a career entrepreneur, 
really can't do enough to reinforce your skills and your learning and finding ways to believe in yourself. And talk to us a little bit about how you've applied this in your life. I mean, writing a book by itself is a huge project. And I know firsthand how busy you are in so many different things. So tell us about that. How do you reinforce your own beliefs and how do you challenge yourself in your lifelong learning? Yeah, that's a great question. Thanks for asking. And two things that I recommend to every single person, not just entrepreneurs, but just people in general. One is get a mentor, right? Success leaves clues, which is just awesome. So, you know, I've been very blessed that I married a, a beautiful lady whose dad is an amazing entrepreneur. He's telling me about real estate, tell me about investments. But I ask him things all the time. And I am not afraid to seek out help from others who are not my mentors. I will contact them, reach out to them and say, hey, I have this question. I love to learn. Can you help me? And people are so generous and they're so wonderful with their time that they will help you, especially for individuals. If you're sincere and really want to learn from them, the mentors are out there. So my first suggestion is get a mentor, right? Tiger Woods has a coach. Michael Jordan has a coach. We all need coaches. You really need it. The second is you have to grow. Uh, Going back to that instance of the person who's struggling, businesses should really, not just the day-to-day, weekly, monthly, annual look, they should look at their businesses in three-year cycles. If after three years, they're having significant hardships, they need to figure out what that is and pinpoint exactly why they're not growing. And that's key. For me personally, I read a book a week, right? That's my goal. I have to read 52 books every year. I cheat a little because I use Audible and, and while I work out, I'm listening to it. But I grow every single day. And like a plant, if I don't grow, I die. But I tell that to all the kids. And as business owners, we get so into the weeds that we forget to grow. That's why I love shows like this and just listening to these podcasts and just listening to others with amazing experience and amazing wealth of knowledge. I learn. And that's the key. You got to grow and you got to get a mentor. Those are the two main keys that have been helpful to me. And I recommend that to every person in all walks of life. That's great advice, Mark. And I'm wondering, you know, if I'm a business owner right now listening to the show, how can I use your book and this BACA methodology to analyze my business and, you know, take this as a growth opportunity? So what could I do right now to apply your model and help me run my business better? Well, I'd love for you to go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble and buy the book. That would be the first step. But what's funny is I will help anyone for free. So the first step is you're setting up this BACA methodology You really need to model your business, business model canvas, lean canvas. You need to put all your assumptions on a dashboard and try to figure out, okay, how am I going to validate or invalidate all my assumptions? What's my value proposition? What's my pain point that I'm solving? Who are my customers? Can I really figure out exactly who my customers are and how do I make them repeatable, right? Every good business has a repeatable and scalable model. What do I need to do to match that customer segment to my value proposition Those are really the keys to any good Baca methodology. Uh, That's great advice. Mark, it's been such a pleasure having you today. It's really, really great advice. And we wish you luck with this great book, The Student's Guide to Entrepreneurship. And you know, as business owners, you really helped remind us today that we really all are students and we're always evolving as students. And I can't think of a better book for people to go out and read and really increase their capacity to run their business better. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate the time. If anyone wants to come see me, I'll be co-director of the Summer Launch Program at Georgetown this summer or um, reach out to me. I'm always willing to work with any entrepreneur. Our guest today has been Mark Steeren, author of The Student's Guide to Entrepreneurship. You know, Mark mentioned using audible.com to read 52 books a year. And for our listeners who'd like to try to optimize your learning, Audible's offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. To download your free audiobook today, go to the show notes at businessownersradio.com and click on the Audible 30-day free trial logo. Thank you for joining us on Business Owners Radio. We hope you enjoyed today's show. As always, you can read more about each episode along with links and offers in the show notes on our website, businessownersradio.com. 
We want to hear your feedback. Please leave comments on this show or suggestions for upcoming episodes. Tell your fellow business owners about the show and, of course, you would love the stars and comments on iTunes. Till next time, keep taking care of business.